Hadith 29 means of goodness. On the authority of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, who said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me of an act which will take me into paradise and will keep me away from the hellfire. He, peace be upon him, said, You have asked me about a great matter, yet it is easy for him for whom Allah makes it easy. Worship Allah without associating any partners with him. Establish the prayer, pay the zakah, fast in Ramadan, and make the pilgrimage to the house. Then he, peace be upon him, said, Shall I not guide you towards the means of goodness? Fasting is a shield. Charity wipes away sin as water extinguishes fire, and the praying of a man in the depths of the night. Then he, peace be upon him, recited, Those who forsake their beds to invoke their Lord in fear and hope, and they spend charity in Allah's cause out of what we have bestowed on them. No person knows what is kept hidden for them of joy as a reward for what they used to do. As sajda verse 16 to 17. Then he, peace be upon him, said, Shall I not inform you of the head of the matter, its pillar and its peak? I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. He, peace be upon him, said, The head of the matter is Islam, its pillar is the prayer, and its peak is jihad. Then he, peace be upon him, said, Shall I not tell you of the foundation of all of that? I said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah. So he took hold of his tongue and said, Restrain this. I said, O Prophet of Allah, Will we be taken to account for what we say with it? He, peace be upon him, said, May your mother be bereaved of you, O Mu'ad. Is there anything that throws people into the hellfire upon their faces or on their noses except the harvest of their tongues? At Tirmidhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. In this hadith, one of, the one of the Sahabas, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked the Prophet a beautiful question. And this is Mu'adh ibn Jabal, a young man. At that time, he did not reach 27 years old yet. And then he asked the Prophet a beautiful question that the Prophet was surprised and amazed and happy to see one of the students, one of the companions of the Prophet ask such a beautiful question. He said, O Messenger of Allah, tell me about a deed which will make me into paradise and will keep me away from the fire. Before I tell you what the Prophet said, let's ponder about what Mu'ad asked. He said, O Prophet of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, tell me about a deed. He did not say, tell me about sayings. He didn't say, akhbirni an qawl. Tell me about something to say. The Sahaba, they were very practical. They were proactive. He wants to work for this deen. Saying everybody is good at talking and saying, but works, deeds, this is when you know people who are serious about this deen or not. So he asked, O oh, Prophet Allah, tell me about a deed, an action, amal, that will make me into paradise. He was not looking for something that the Prophet will teach him so he can be a good businessman or that the money will come by day and night. No, he asked about a deed that will make him into paradise. And by the way, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, the Prophet saw some, he praised him and he said, The most knowledgeable about, in the, from the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about halal and haram, about the lawful and unlawful, is Mu'adh ibn Jabal. And what a beautiful testimony, what a beautiful ijazah that the Prophet gave to this young man. The Prophet, he said to him, you have really asked about a major matter. It is indeed easy for him whom Allah made it easy. It's a major thing to go to paradise and to stay away from hellfire. But if you are sincere about it, Allah will make it easy on you. And the Prophet ﷺ, as a teacher, he gave him the answer. The first one, he told him about the most important thing, which is al-fara'id, obligations, the five pillars of Islam. Told him, of course, about to testify, Prayer, then zakat, sawm, fasting, and hajj. Because that is the must. Number two, he told him about abwabu al-khayr, about the gates of goodness. There are a lot of gates. And you're not required just to go through one door. Maybe you are good at giving charity. Maybe you are good at praying at night. Maybe you are good at helping others. 
Islam opens a lot of doors for people if they would like to do goodness. We are not robots. We are not like, should be the same. Everybody can excel in one field. So he told him just examples. He said, for example, fasting. And here we're talking about extra fasting, not the some Ramadan, because Ramadan is, is fara'id, is a must. Here he's talking about the extra fasting. It's a shield, it's a protection. And then he gave him another gate of goodness, which is sadaqah, charity, not zakat, because zakat was mentioned part of the five pillars. This is extra, this is charity, sadaqah, because sadaqah extinguishes the sin. And all of us, we are sinners. The Prophet said, That every son of Adam is a sinner. And the best of all sinners are those who repent to Allah. So, a sadaqah giving charity to the poor extinguishes the sin, eliminates, wipes out the sin exactly as water extinguishes fire. And another do door and gate of goodness is to pray in the middle of the night. And the Prophet, the Prophet quoted a beautiful verse from Surah al sajda Look at the beautiful verse Allah says about those who wake up in the middle of the night to pray. He says that their sides, جنوبهم, sides, forsake their bed. The Arabic verb used here is تتجافى. Jafa means you have a problem with someone. It looks like they have a problem with their beds. They cannot stay there for eight hours. Three, four hours and then they wake up to pray for Allah Azza wa Jal. But then what is waiting for them in the paradise, in the day of judgment, no eyes have ever seen. And no ears have ever heard about it. And no one can imagine what are the rewards that is awaiting for those people. And then the Prophet after that, he told him about the peak of command, which is Islam. And then the pillar of Islam, which is prayer. And then about the top of the summit, which is al-jihad fi sabilillah, to struggle in the way of Allah Azza wa Jal. And at the end of the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he advised Mu'adh. And he advised us too, because he's a teacher of humanity. He's a mercy for everyone. He says, be careful. The controlling of all this, if you'd like to keep the ajr that you do, if you go give zakat, if you pray, if you do all these beautiful things, if you'd like to keep the ajr, if you would like to keep the reward, control your tongue. Because if you don't control your tongue, all what you have done, acts of goodness will disappear. Even if they come as mountains of goodness, as mountains of hasanat, because of this tongue, one can nullify everything. And Muhammad was surprised. He told him, oh, Prophet of Allah, are we going to be held accountable for what we say? Then the Prophet explained to him, that what topples people on their noses or on their faces in the hellfire, the harvest of their tongues. That takes us back to hadith, the, one of the hadith number 15, if you remember, the hadith about man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmi al-akhir falyaqul khayran awli yasmut. Anyone who believes in Allah and in the last day should say good things or let him keep silent. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help us to worship him the right way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to admit all of us in paradise. May Allah purify our intentions. Make us steadfast on the path of Islam. Jazakumullah khairan for your beautiful listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.